Welcome to another conversation as we have a a chat with candidates who are running for county commissioner. It's going to be a series of conversations that we will be hosting and uh, joining us today as one of those candidates for re-election. We have Jared Valenzuela joining us. Welcome to the conversation. Thank you, Kevin. Always a pleasure to be here and really grateful for the opportunity to talk about the accomplishments that we've had in the last four years of my first term and, and uh, talk about why I'm running for re-election. Yeah, let's jump right into the questions. And that is, you know, why are you seeking another term? Why are you seeking a second term? Yeah, so I was, you know, lucky enough to be elected four years ago, Kevin. Um, you know, really, really love public service. Um, you know, I, I'm a lifelong resident of Plymouth County. I, I grew up in Rockland. I live in Plymouth now graduate of Sacred Heart High School in Kingston, Massasoit Community College in Brockton, and Bridgewater State University in Bridgewater. So uh, I'm really a a lifelong Plymouth County guy. I've never left here. Uh, I love it. And, uh, you know, I was lucky enough, um, you know, to get my first start in public service working for then State Senator, now Mayor of Weymouth, Bob Hedlund, and uh, was a co-worker of Senator Patrick O'Connor. And I saw how both of them I engaged in public service and, and helping people and how that was always the first and foremost thing that we did in that Senate office. And I know Senator O'Connor certainly continues that legacy as well, or has his own legacy of that as well. So um, it was taking that passion and harnessing it um, at a wider level. I was elected to the planning board in Rockland. I was on a couple of appointed committees there. And I was lucky enough to be elected in 2020 as county commissioner. And I've really enjoyed being able to build relationships with uh, legislators on both sides of the aisle, uh, with other countywide elected officials, in town officials, in city officials. And we've been able to work hard together uh, for the betterment of the people of Plymouth County. I know we're going to get into you know some of the programs, some of the other stuff that we've been doing, and some of the stuff I'm interested in doing. Um, but I'm really proud of my record personally in, in my first term, and I'm looking forward to bringing that into a second term. Not everybody knows what a county commissioner does, doesn't know. Maybe there are a lot of folks who don't know a lot about county government, but just for the record, what is it that a county commissioner does? So we are the elected executive branch of county government and we are a policymaking board. So when we vote, we create policy and we have uh, great full-time employees that, that carry that policy out. Um, so we are the oversight of the county administrator, uh, and other folks in our office, as well as other department heads, uh, maintenance department, 4-H, and others. Uh, we also set policy. So we, we vote to create programs, uh, which we have done in the last four years, and we've been able to do uh, because of good financial planning and discipline. Uh, we've been able to carry out um, some excellent programming. So um, we are the policymaking board. Uh, we, you know, some of the statutory requirements, we, we vote on payroll every two weeks. We vote on paying bills every two weeks. So um, we vote on those things and we take care of those items as well. So um, we are, uh, we are, you know, proud of the work that we do. Um, and, and, you know, candidly, we are out in our communities, you know, we're attending select board meetings, we're attending city council meetings, we're attending other events that folks are asking us to be at. Um, we've also managed um, multiple federal grant programs. Of course, I know we're going to talk more a little bit of length about CARES and ARPA, we also manage the burn grant for qualifying communities, um, the vehicle procurement uh, bid that we take care of, uh, and so many other programs, uh, regional service programs, parking department. Again, I mentioned 4-H. So uh, there's a lot of departments and a lot of work that we're taking care of and that we're doing uh, across the county. And uh, again, the commissioners are the executive branch oversight and policymaking board uh, that that oversees that. We are the elected. Would you say that there's enough transparency in yeah. what the commissioners do, whether it's out and about or when you have your regular meetings? If not, how can that be improved? Yeah, I think, you know, we are we are transparent by the letter of the law, mass general law. We are subject to open meeting law. Uh, when I was first elected, the county used to meet, uh, the commissioners used to meet uh, during the daytime hours when people were at work. I made a push and my colleagues agreed that we were not going to do that. Now, if we have one-off meetings that, you know, here and there, yes, of course, we have to. But 
so do select board and city councils, right? I mean, if they have off schedule meetings in the daytime because they need to take uh, action on something that might be time sensitive, we do that. Um, but one of the things that we I pushed for was that, and I pushed for a regular meeting schedule. So we meet every other Thursday. Now it's based on the payroll cycle because again, we have to vote to approve payroll. So we meet the Thursday before our pay period. So um, you can put it in your calendar. It's every other Thursday, uh, every two weeks. So we meet every two weeks. Uh, so sometimes it's the first and third Thursday. Sometimes it's the second and fourth Thursday. But regardless, we are meeting every other Thursday at 5.30 p.m. Uh, as it relates to transparency, though, I, I believe that, you know, we, we've been perfectly transparent. Um, I know that one of the things, uh, one of the comments that gets made is, well, local select board meetings are taped and televised. And that's great. And I support taping and televising commissioner meetings as well. Uh, when I was first elected, we didn't have the technology to do that. I reached out to local access channels, um, and a handful of them, uh, or at least the ones more local, said, well, if you record it, we may rebroadcast it. Now, as we've talked about for our um, present company excluded, of course, but if, um, you know, as we've talked about our, our, you know, we'll talk about some of the budgetary issues I think that the county has. We have a very small staff, but they do excellent work. I didn't think it made sense to um, put another um, another task on their plate for the potential of it being rebroadcast. I mean, somebody had mentioned we might have time Friday night at around 11 p.m., um, which, you know, it's fine. But I'm not opposed to it. Right. So we were able to use some some um, COVID relief money to purchase Zoom equipment, which we purchased and we now have in hand and we've used, um, which obviously we're capable of recording. So. Uh, we've now begun recording the meetings um, for the potential for rebroadcast. But for those who have wondered for years why it isn't, remember when you pay your cable bill, uh, you have a peg access fee on your cable bill. That goes directly to paying for WHCA, Abington Cam, WRPS, uh, the local scene where I am in Plymouth. So that's what that pays for. So Plymouth County doesn't have that. There's no peg access fee for Plymouth County TV, right? So uh, we don't have that studio, that equipment, that funding available uh, for us to be able to have uh, recorded our meetings. Thankfully, we have a you know some technologically savvy folks in our office who can run the Zoom, run the camera uh, that we purchased to go along with the Zoom equipment. We've begun recording those meetings, and we will be putting them online. Uh, and candidly, you know, starting soon, we're just going to start live broadcasting them on YouTube and. Um, if any local access, if you, Kevin, or anybody else wants to pull it off of YouTube or um, and rebroadcast it on your local uh, channel, feel free. Uh, but I believe we are fully transparent. You can go to PlymouthCountyMA.gov. All of our minutes are online. Uh, candidly, some of the folks that offer this criticism and critique, um, I go to the websites of the communities that they're in, that they're serving in, and I don't see the same level of transparency. Our budget's online. Every line item of our budget is online. You can see what every individual is getting paid online. Um, so we are very transparent. Um, I think sometimes folks with transparency, they, they don't want to look right. It's sort of like, um, you know, they, they don't want to look for things. And, uh, you know, if people want to find out more, they can always go to PlymouthCountyMA.gov. We put everything on our website. It's been on there for years. And again, as it relates to taping and rebroadcasting meetings, we're, we're going to begin doing that. So, uh, I'm looking forward to that. And, I'm sure once we do that, folks will complain that, well, you're not broadcasting it at a time that's convenient for me. So there's always going to be those who say you're not transparent enough, um, but I'm very proud of my transparency and, and availing myself and my colleagues avail themselves, uh, again, to local media outlets to answer questions. And of course, you know, to the to your your multiple programs that you do, Kevin, here uh, and elsewhere, you know, we're always availing ourselves. So um, we have nothing to hide. We are subject to the open meeting law, just like every other government entity in the state except the legislature and uh we will we will continue to maintain our positive track record of transparency there are many who would say that when we entered into covid it was a tough time the federal government stepped in trump administration created cares act that to help folks get through those tough times the biden administration continued it with the American Rescue Plan Act called ARPA. And the county uh, decided to step in and say, we would we would like to administrate those funds to our, our membership. 
Talk to me about the success of CARES and ARPA and how do you build upon that once that ARPA sunsets at the end of the year? Yeah, so I'm really proud of those programs, Kevin. When ARPA sunsets, Plymouth County will have uh, managed nearly $200 million. It was $90 million in CARES Act and $101 million in ARPA. We did it at 1% or less administration costs. We're trying to about one and a quarter percent for ARPA. We were 0.87 percent for CARES, lowest in the country. With CARES, we were the only government entity, for, I'm sorry, the first government entity not to return any money to the federal government. The Commonwealth did. And as some may recall, the Commonwealth did not want us doing the CARES Act. Um, and then, you know, we delivered 50 percent more dollars uh, to our communities and like side communities outside of Plymouth County received. So uh, we're really proud of those programs. It, it was it demonstrated to the people of Plymouth County that we are capable and able to do these programs. Now, when it relates to, you know, those 50% more dollars, it allowed us to also build those relationships. Um, and we've been able to get a lot of feedback from a lot of folks across the county, a lot of elected officials across the county who want to see the county do more because they saw how effectively and efficiently we managed CARES. I mean, the state spent tens of millions of dollars administrating it. We received an award from the National Association of Counties for our management of the CARES Act. The United States Treasury recognized us for our management of the CARES Act, and the uh, Federal House of Representatives Congress recognized us uh, for our, our management of the CARES Act. So we were really proud of the program we put together. That became a model, not just in Massachusetts, but nationwide. Uh, and the same has been true for ARPA. So uh, those programs are coming to an end. Um, you know, ARPA will still have some residual. I mean, the communities need to commit the funds um, to the county by October. We then need to commit them by December 31st, 2024. The dollars need to be out the door by December 31st, 2026, with reporting going into 2027. So, um, so ARPA, as we know it, is more or less sunsetting, but, you know, there will still be some residuals beyond 2024, but the bulk of the work with ARPA will be done. Um, to answer the second part of your question is building off of those successes. Um, you know, we've launched multiple programs uh, in my first term, um, mobile integrated health, which is something that has serviced uh, hundreds of people in their homes already. Uh, and that is saving people money. Again, it cuts down on emergency room recidivism. It cuts down on, which cuts down on costs for hospitals, which obviously helps our insurance premiums uh, on a personal level. It also helps keep people healthy. People prefer to be recovering at home. Uh, studies have proven that that is true. So if we can have a mobile integrated health program that helps people recover at home uh, instead of in a rehab set, setting or situation um, or going back to the hospital, we're going to do that. Um, talking about food insecurity, we secured a grant from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and we've created uh, a working group that involves the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department, the Old Colony Planning Council, the Marion Institute, South Shore Community Action Council in the County of Plymouth, as well as the Town of Plymouth. Um, we're looking to ex we'll expand, expand that regionally, uh, but that's the working group right now. Uh, and of course, the Pond Management Bureau, which is something that, uh, I'm sorry, Pond Resource Center, it was originally called the Pond Management Bureau, which said it was too, too boring. Um, but communities are looking at buying pieces of equipment to take care of their waterways. Well, why would Hanson buy something that they're going to use once and then not use again for five years? And maybe Abington doesn't know Hanson has it. So then Hanson goes out and buys, I'm sorry, Abington goes out and buys the same piece of equipment. How about Plymouth County buy that equipment, have that inventory, and then the communities can use those pieces of equipment and they will know that the county has those pieces of equipment. So those, those are the programs that we are going to do and continue to do and build and expand on top of everything else we're already doing. Um, in my second term, um, going forward, building off of the success of CARES and ARPA. Is there an issue or a series of issues that are essentially important to this particular race? Well, I think it's, it's for the county, it's always financial issues and budgetary issues, Kevin. Um, we, we can't tax. Uh, our revenue is derived from real estate transactions. We don't have the luxury of asking the voters for an override. So we can't be profligate in our spending. It takes discipline. It's hard to say no. Uh, a lot of elected officials don't want to have to say no anymore. Um, at the county level, we have to say no. Um, the Commonwealth has eliminated uh, half the counties in the state um, for one reason or another. And by no means is Plymouth County on the chopping block. We are not. 
But there's a very thin line. And if we start to have significant financial issues, uh, the state will will begin to take a look at that. You know, you look at towns like Hanover that needed an $8 million override this year. We That's a that's three-fourths of our total budget that Hanover uh, overspent by, right? Um, and, and their leadership on their select board um, needed to make tough decisions, but they didn't make the tough decisions before. Uh, and it led to that point. So you can't, you need to be cognizant of the people that you put into these positions. Um, I'm very tough as a, as a fiscal watchdog for the county budget because I believe in county government. I'm a cheerleader for county government. I want to see county government succeed. We have our financial house in order. And that's not just thanks to me. That's thanks to my colleagues. That's thanks to the treasurer as well. Um, but it's making sure we continue to keep our financial house in order so that way we can continue to grow some of the programs that the member communities want us to do that they just can't do on their own. But what can be done to improve the county's uh, finances, the annual budget, so you don't have to worry about structural deficits, so you don't have to worry about, oh, we're going to have to cut staff. And I know that you have a limited number of staff members, and everybody is essential. What can you do moving forward? And you already you already mentioned it eloquently. You can't go to the towns and go, oh, well, we need you to do an override to help us financially. Maybe there are things that are being done in-house already to already improve the financial standing and help increase the bottom line. Yeah, so um, we are exploring new revenue opportunities. Um, certainly the um, Woodlot in Plymouth, we entered into an agreement with a uh, development company. Um, we have a, a signed lease agreement with them and we have um, some revenue uh, projections in place should should something come to fruition. Uh, that would help improve. Um, we did lobby the legislature for an increase in our deeds excise. Um, you know, so just brief background. Uh, the Commonwealth sets the fee schedule at the Registry of Deeds. The Registry of Deeds in Plymouth County, they are county employees. The buildings are owned by the county. Uh, the register is elected by the inhabitants of Plymouth County. Uh, it's our retirement. It's our health insurance, everything. The state, for every $1 we collect, the state takes $0.90. Cents, we keep 10 we asked for a modest increase to 30 cents. They said no. I mean, they have billions of dollars for migrants, but they couldn't afford what would have amounted to about two and a half to $3 million annually for Plymouth County, which would have then helped significantly fund all of those programs that I had mentioned before. Um, to continue the improvement, you know, little it's little things. I mean, the parking department, Jeff Welps, our deputy treasurer, has done a great job. Expanding that program, that program makes us uh, some money. It's a very modest amount of money. By no means are we getting rich off of it. Um, but that was an unfunded mandate that the Commonwealth imposed on uh, local municipalities. And they, in the 1980s, asked Plymouth County to handle the processing of that. So we've been doing that uh, for several years now, uh, for almost 40 years, actually. He has greatly expanded that program to include communities outside of Plymouth County, communities like Wellesley, communities in the western part of the county, uh, western part of the state. So um, we're continuing, uh, and that that generates revenue as well. Um, we do procurement, um, you know, for smaller communities that it doesn't make sense for them to have somebody on full time. We do procurement for them. So we're always looking for different ways to uh, find revenue and stabilize our budget. And uh, thankfully, um, you know, through again hard work and discipline and financial discipline, we've been able to do that. I think you've already shared a few of the ideas that are, uh, you know, groundbreaking and that are new to what the county can offer. But are there any ideas right now that are on the drawing board? Maybe they're in concept that we could see either in your next term or in the foreseeable future. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mentioned the uh, Pond Resource Center. I mentioned Mobile Integrated Health. I mentioned uh, the Food Security Council. Um, one of the other things that I really love to wrap my arms around, and, and they, those three programs are on top of, again, the parking department, 4-H, uh, 4-H extension services, procurement, vehicle bid, Mayflower Municipal Health Group, Plymouth County uh, OPEB Trust Fund. So all those other programs already as well. Um, one of the things that we heard, again, talking about CARES and ARPA and harnessing our new network and relationships with our local leaders uh, is school transportation. And uh, that that would obviously be a, a massive bear. That's something that I think would take all four years. Um, 
towns are just paying an extraordinary amount of money for school transportation, whether it be within their district or sending students out of district to an agricultural school or a vocational school uh, or, you know, students with special abilities to, you know, you know, special uh, specialist school, in some cases in the North Shore. So one of the things that I've discovered in these conversations with these local leaders is that these these transportation companies are pitting towns against each other. You know, say Abington and Hanson are out to bid or Whitman and Brockton are out to bid uh, at the same time. These school companies, uh, these transportation companies know there's not a lot of competition. So they can drive the price up because they're pitting the towns against each other. Right. What I would love to do, at least in the short term, is figure out can Plymouth County be the one that goes to bid? So instead of Abington and Brockton and Women and Hanson and Rockland, I'm just throwing towns out there. But instead of them competing against each other with these companies, Plymouth County does the bid. And now the companies are competing against each other for Plymouth County and by extension, the communities that are participating in that bid. Uh, those That would save, I think, significant dollars for our communities. And then maybe down the road, Plymouth County could potentially expand that program to include the county being the transportation company uh, themselves. That's a, a far more loftier goal uh, than at least at least being the one that does the bid. Uh, and I, in a second term, fully intend on exploring that more. Another thing that I would like to do, and again, this gets to um, having to make tough decisions uh, at the county level, Another thing that I would like to do is a county grant writer. Um, that was something I wanted to do four years ago. Um, candidly, we had to cut it and um, we couldn't afford it. So um, I am always looking to see if our revenue situation improves or, you know, if we're able to, uh, you know, reshuffle some of the deck within our own internal, um, you know, our internal structure uh, to figure out a way to hire a grant writer. I think that'd be beneficial not only to the county as an entity, but to our member communities as well. Not that anybody would say a bad word about the 4-H program, but talk to us about the importance of it to the county and the membership uh, that you offer services to. Yeah, so that's a really important program, Kevin, and, and we love our 4-H program. Molly Vollmer, Blake, Meg, Kathy, they all do such an amazing job. All the volunteers, I mean, we have one of the, we have the best 4-H extension program in the Commonwealth. Um, it's important work, you know, in the part of the county that, you know, Whitman Hanson is in, uh, in Abington, you know, it's the landscape is dotted with factories from when we were the largest producer of shoes for the Northern Army in the Civil War. But you come down the county, you know, where I live in Plymouth, going out to Carver and Plimpton and Middleborough, it's, it's cranberry bogs, it's farms. And the 4-H Extension Program does a great job of educating and keeping young people interested in agriculture. Um, it's an important component to our local economy here in Massachusetts and especially here in Plymouth County and the work that they do to, to not only keep kids educated, engaged and having fun doing it. And they do have a lot of fun doing it, but it also keeps them on the forefront of new developments, new technology, um, new techniques, um, all of those things. So we're able and proud of the fact that we've had that program for many years uh, and the people that do the work in that de extension department are great. You know, and they're doing great work on the county farm, uh, both on the portion that our 4-H department um, uh, manages, but also um, collaborating with the sheriff's department. And, and you know, the sheriff's department had a, a calf, a baby calf that was rejected by its mom named William. Um, and our 4-H Megan, uh, uh, Miss Meg, uh, you know, nursed him and took care of him. You know, it was rejected by his mother. So uh, we, she's taken care of him and raised that cow. So. Um, you know, it's collaborating and doing that work. There was a sheet time story hour that Miss Meg ran uh, that had hundreds of people that the sheriff's department needed to put a detail out for the traffic. So um, we're really proud of the work that they do. And we're really proud of the work and the collaboration that they do with the folks at the sheriff's department on, on that portion of the farm as well. Um, but it can't be understated enough. And of course, Blake and his bugs, uh, he's the entomologist. You can see a weird bug out there, take a picture, send it to Blake. But Blake goes into schools and educates students on um, on those bugs. He's going into senior centers and he's educating people. You know, in this day and age in social media, there's so many, there's so many, you know, misinformation or hyperbolic information that gets out there. I think I saw something about a flying spider that had people, um, uh, 
you know, freaking out or scared, um, which I don't want flying spiders either, to be clear. I, I don't hate spiders, but I don't want them flying around me. Um, but we were able to put out information about that spider to say, all right, it's not as bad as people may make it out to be. But um, but it's important to have that information get out there. And, and we're really proud of that program. And, and I I try to be their biggest cheerleader because I think they just they do such great work and they're they're just wonderful people. There's always a smile on their face. Uh, and why not? They get to they get to hang with farm animals and do all sorts of fun stuff all day. So I'm really proud of that program and the work that they do. As our uh, conversation starts to wind down, is uh, I don't just have a couple more questions and probably this one is more of an open ended question. Is there a topic? or an issue that we have discussed or a question I haven't asked to uh, that maybe you'd want to talk to, or is there something that we have already gone over or talked about that maybe you might want to go back to and maybe do a quick follow-up or additional information on? Well, as you know, Kevin, I love Plymouth County. I'm a huge cheerleader for county government. I believe in county government and I could take hours talking about all the things that we want to do, but I'm really proud of what we've been able to accomplish. And, you know, in terms of stuff we haven't covered, I think we've really touched on, on a lot. Um, we do, as I like to say, the unfun stuff of government, except for 4-H. 4-H is fun. Um, but we're doing important work for people. And, it, it may seem like it's an unnecessary or redundant layer of government, but that is an incredibly unfair thing. If we didn't exist, um, Plymouth County communities would not have fared as well in the pandemic uh, as they did with Plymouth County uh, at the helm of those federal dollars. And, and there's other programs, again, the burn grant that, you know, we've had a couple of communities fall off of that. That is for, you know, community, it's based on crime statistics. A couple of those communities have fallen off, candidly, because we brought in money to help those communities address the issues that exist in their towns, right? Uh, and that's a good thing, <laughs> you know? So we're doing these things. And again, we do it quietly without fanfare. And, and I think, you know, the, the point I would like to make here is I didn't get elected for titles. I'm not running for the pay or the benefits or anything like that. I'm running to help people and I'm running to to be a public servant. And, and I'm not running to make noise and, you know, pound a table or puff my chest. I'm running to execute good services for people because that's what they expect. They elected us to do a job. They didn't elect us to fight and flip tables and run to the media and yell and scream and make noise. That's not what we were elected to do. Uh, and I'm proud of my record as a commissioner these last four years of bringing county government uh, into uh, the 20, you know, making county government accessible, open, but also bringing programs to bear that we otherwise weren't able to do before. And a lot of that credit goes to, you know, my colleagues in really getting that budget in, in the budget in place and getting the financial house in order. So to the voters out there watching this, pay close attention to to what we say. Um, you know, candidly, I'm the only candidate with public and private sector experience. I'm the only candidate right now in the private sector. Um, the only candidate that um, right now um, understands what budgetary constrictions we have and what those constraints are and lastly the only candidate with the discipline to be able to say no when we have to say no to make sure we keep our financial house in order as we wrap up we we thank you for joining us if folks want to find out more about your campaign they want to reach out to you to get involved with your campaign or any of the above how can they do that yeah, they can visit uh, valenzola.com V-A-L-A-N-Z-O-L-A.com, votevalenzola.com. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook at Plymouth County Commissioner Jared Valenzola. You can follow me on Instagram at Commissioner period Valenzola. Uh, I do not have an X account or anything else like that. I don't do TikTok or Snapchat or whatever Bill Belichick likes to call it. Um, but you can learn more about me there. You can always tune in to the JV team with Jared Valenzola every Wednesday uh, on WAT 615 to 7, where you can hear me talk about how much I love Paul McCartney and music and Tom Brady. Um, and uh, yeah, that's where you can learn more. And of course, you can always call me 617-827-3457. Well, again, we want to thank you for joining us and and being a part of uh, this segment and and like we say to all the candidates uh, including yourself uh, we wish you the best of luck and and just remind and remind folks also don't forget that early voting 
is ongoing as you are viewing this. Uh, so make sure you get out and vote whether you do it beforehand or on November 5th, uh, leading up to 8 p.m. that night. Uh, Jared, again, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Always appreciate it. You got it. And we want to thank you for tuning into a program like this. Again, the idea is to make you better informed or at least better inform you as to where a lot of things are, whether it's an issue or a candidate or what's going on in and around your community. Until our next conversation, have a good day.